those of you that follow me on Instagram will have seen that I recently changed my camera system. And there's a bit of a story behind that. Uh, I've been a fan of the Micro Four Thirds system for quite a long time. I actually bought one of the first Micro Four Thirds cameras that came out, used that for a while, and I've been using Micro Four Thirds cameras for travel and stuff like that on and off for quite a long time. And as I've gradually transitioned into more and more video and less stills photography, uh, I've been, become even more enamored with the system. Uh, they are very video centric, especially the GH series. And last year, uh, in preparation for my trip along the European Divide bikepacking trail, I got myself a GH6. And I mean, I already had a few lenses and I complemented that with a bit of other stuff. And I thought, oh great, this is what I'm gonna use for a while now. Uh, and then, well, I didn't get to go on that trip for a number of reasons. And Panasonic released the G9 that had face auto detect uh, rather than just contrast based auto detect. And as I do this sort of stuff every now and again, uh, I like to have at least the ability to use autofocus sometimes, even if uh, as, almost as soon as I'm behind the camera, I tend to use manual focus. So I ended up selling the GH6 and budgeted to buying a G9 to use with the lenses I had and the kit that I had that I thought was quite good. In the Christmas break, I sat down and I was just about to pull the plug and order the G9. And I was looking online and I found that the G9 was gonna cost me something like 22,000 Swedish krona for just the body. And I already knew that it was gonna be something like that and I had budgeted for that. So I thought, oh well, no problems. But as I was looking online, I found that for the same price after a rebate that Panasonic were running, I could get a Panasonic S5 Mark II X, the video centric full frame version, in essentially the same body as the G9, for the same price. And not only that, the price was the same, but I also received the uh, standard zoom lens. The 20 to 60, although maybe not the brightest lens and is a variable aperture zoom lens, it's still quite a handy small lens. I have used it before. I did have an S5 earlier for a while and it has a 20 to 60 millimeter range, which I find it's a very, very handy range while traveling. That came along without extra charge with the body. And I thought, oh, well, great, then I get a lens, which is right. But what really pushed me over the edge was that as well, I received an 85 millimeter 1.8 prime lens, at, again, at no extra charge. So for the same price as the, GH, uh, the G9 body, I received the S5 Mark II X body, a 20 to 60 millimeter zoom, and an 85 millimeter 1.8 prime lens. All of a sudden, buying the G9 didn't look all that great. So I sat down, I did some math, and I realized that even if I was to sell all my uh, micro four thirds gear, all the lenses I had already had, and I'd actually just acquired some new lenses that I'd found uh, cheap online uh, buying secondhand. But if I sold all that, I'd be able to invest in uh, the full frame L mount system and I was actually going to get a better deal. One other aspect of this is it would allow me to build a system from scratch, which is something I haven't done for quite a long time. I've generally just sort of swapped and changed and had different systems and different cameras, but actually I now would actually be able to build a system that was consistent uh, and I was able to use. It's also going to look very professional for any professional work I do. And I, decided that, well, I might just get the uh, S5 IIX. One of the reasons I really wanted to get it was the line of 1.8 millimeter prime lenses. They have a range of lenses that are all 1.8 and all the same size, basically the same weight, 
and have the same filter diameter. So they have a 67 millimeter filter mounting diameter. And I wanted a kit that was uh, consistent that, that I could use on my gimbal and that I could use consistently and I only wanted one filter size. And I, I really like prime lenses in the 1.8 to 2.0 range because they're smaller and lighter than the 1.4 ones and uh, they have enough light, especially in full frame, to get a nice shallow depth of field if that's what you want to do. So I actually ended up getting the 18, 24, 35, 50 to complement the 85 millimeter that I already had. So I have an 18, a 24, a 35, a 50, and an 85, all in a nice, reasonably compact for full frame, small size that uh, let in a lot of light, have a consistent filter size, uh, balance equally on my gimbal, and basically that's all I need. If there's one thing that I could complain about is that they don't make a 28, which is my favorite focal length. And I would gladly have swapped both the 24 and the 35 for a 28 millimeter lens. So an 18, a 28, a 50, and an 85 would have been great. But you have to take what's there. So this is what I got. Panasonic have also just released a 100 millimeter 2.8 macro lens that's the same size and I hope to be complementing with that as well. Then I will have a really, really nice prime lens kit that I can do, well, basically almost anything with. I then started complementing with a bit of other stuff. Some stuff I already had, which amongst other things, the uh, XLR adapted, adapter for Panasonic with a shotgun mic. This is the same one that fits on the GH series which will give me high quality audio and it will give me four channels of audio if I want. The other thing that I felt I needed was the Sigma uh, adapter, which lets me adapt EF lenses to use on the, uh, the S5. Uh, I do have a couple of uh, cinema lenses that are EF and I am actually able to borrow a lot of EF lenses through work. So that makes it, Easy for me to borrow some specialty stuff that I can do uh, with the adapter. I also managed to find online a quite cheap Sigma 24 to 70 2.8 zoom lens. Now this is a great lens. It works really well and uh, I got it reasonably cheap. So I have it and I can use it. The only problem is I don't like this sort of lens. I find it's too heavy and too large. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to use this or if I'm just going to basically sell it. We'll see what happens, but at least I have it. And for run and gun stuff, or I don't do wedding photography, but if I was to do wedding photography, this would be a perfect lens for that. So now I had a nice kit. The complemented worked really well on the gimbal I have and I've got 67 millimeter filters, isn't that all that I need? And then I suddenly found S5, the original S5 online, very, very cheaply. So I actually bought that as well. So now I have a backup camera. The S5 doesn't have quite the same codex as the S2X, but having used it previously, I know that I can film a lot of stuff with it and it would be a perfect backup camera and with the rebates that are on the new S5 twos, the S5s are really, really cheap on the secondhand market. And I got what's basically looks like a new camera for uh, uh, a little bit over 8,000 Swedish krona, which is incredibly cheap. It's basically close to what you would expect to paying for a, a GH5 or something like that. So uh, I have a backup camera. The autofocus on the camera is not as good as the S5 two. But as I say, I generally use manual focus and I've actually used autofocus on the S5 earlier. And it, if you are a little bit careful and you know what you're doing, you can get it to work reasonably well. It's not as reliable as S5 II or the S5-2X though. So now I have a nice little kit. I've got a backup camera. I've got a professional looking line of lenses and I can mount a, a range of different cinema lenses through the EF adapter. 
I have cages on both cameras. I normally don't like to use cages, but both cameras came with cages. Or rather, I bought a cage for the S52X, and the S5 already came with a cage. So I can look pretty professional. I can go out there, and both cameras uh, support B-Raw with an external recorder. And being a Blackmagic fan, that's something I really appreciate. And I should also add, one of the things that pushed me over the edge to getting this system was actually that with the release of the new Black Magic Cinema camera that actually has an L mount lens mount, which means that if I want to get a Black Magic Cinema camera, and I am a Black Magic fan and I do a lot of work in Resolve, so I, I might want to do that, uh, I'll have all the lenses and everything I need to do that. And they'll actually complement the, the S5 excellently, especially as I can get B-Raw from the S5. I think the sensor in the cinema camera or in these cameras are very, very similar actually. So there it is, new camera system, really, really pleased. It's a system that's uh, organized. I have everything I need. Uh, I need to complement with maybe a longer zoom lens for stills photography mainly, like a 70 to 200 or something like that. Panasonic make a 70 to 300 with variable aperture that looks interesting. But as I have the EF adapter, I'm considering getting one of my favorite all time lenses, which is the Canon uh, 70 to 200 uh, f4 lens which i know works perfectly on these bodies with the adapter and you can pick that especially the non-is version which i don't want is in it on, on it because i have in-body stabilization you can get picked them up very very cheaply and as i already have the adapter as i said uh, that's something i will be considering getting and it also happens to have a 67 millimeter lens thread as well so that's something I'll be looking into. So far, I've just been taking mainly stills, walking around testing, not really doing any production work, but mainly just testing all the equipment. And so far, I'm, I'm wrapped. It's, it's, it's absolutely great. I love it. I really like the ergonomics and uh, how everything works with the Panasonics, and they are very video centric, so there is a lot of possibility of getting it to work as a really good hybrid video camera. I'd say it's the best value hybrid video camera, especially full frame, that you can get at the moment. And uh, there is actually one, one little more trick that it has up its sleeve that's something that I'm going to do a separate video on, and that is actually the APS-C secret from Panasonic. But stay tuned for that. That's the next video coming up.